Greetings, Charles County residents. Today is Friday, March 19th. My name is Jen Harris, and I am the Chief of Media Services for Charles County Government and your local public information officer for the COVID-19 pandemic. In breaking news yesterday, Governor Hogan announced that based on the state's accelerating vaccination rate and an anticipated increase in vaccine supply from the federal government, the state of Maryland will enter phase two of its vaccine distribution plan early next week. Beginning on Tuesday, March 23rd, the state will make groups in phase two eligible in waves based on risk factors, including age, essential occupations, and underlying health conditions before opening it up to the general population in phase three. Let's break this down together. Phase 2A will become effective on Tuesday, March 23rd. Eligibility will open for all Marylanders ages 60 and older. Pre-registration at mass vaccination sites is now open to all those in this group at covidvax.maryland.gov. Phase 2B will become effective on Tuesday, March 30th. Eligibility will open for all Marylanders ages 16 and older with underlying medical conditions that increase the risk for severe COVID-19 illness. Phase 2C will become effective on Tuesday, April 13th. Eligibility will open for all Marylanders ages 55 and older, as well as essential workers in critical industries, including construction workers, those in restaurant and food services, utilities, transportation, financial services, IT, and other critical infrastructure industries. Phase three will become effective on Tuesday, April 27th. Eligibility will open for all Marylanders ages 16 and older. This now provides us with a timeline for when everyone in Maryland will become eligible to receive a vaccine. Charles County continues to make progress on vaccinations, and the state of Maryland has reserved hundreds of appointments for our own residents at the mass vaccination site at Regency Furniture Stadium in Waldorf. Any eligible resident can pre-register for appointments depending on availability. The best way to access appointments, again, is by going to covidvax.maryland.gov, and if you need assistance or lack access to the internet or a computer, you can always call 1-855-MD-GOVAX for assistance. The health department locally is continuing its clinics, and you can pre-register to obtain an appointment by visiting charlescountycovid.org and filling out a brief online survey or calling 301-609-6717 for assistance. Yesterday, I was joined by Dr. Diana E. Abney, our health officer for Charles County, who shared the latest updates on their progress in vaccinations locally here in Charles County. Let's take a listen to our conversation. Dr. Abney, let's begin by reflecting on the past year. We have just passed the one-year anniversary of our community closing down due to COVID-19, and the pandemic has changed our lives drastically. Since that time, we have implemented mask wearing, testing, contact tracing, and finally now vaccines to help us eventually end this pandemic. I'd like to review the importance of each of these strategies with you. Of course, Jen, I'd be happy to review the importance of some of these measures that we're taking to decrease the spread of COVID-19 and help end this crisis. Let's start talking about wearing masks. Masks prevent or decrease the respiratory droplets that carry COVID-19 virus from being spread from person to person. When we breathe, talk, cough, laugh, etc., the air that is expelled from our noses or mouths carry the droplets. And those respiratory droplets are breathed in by the people who are near us. They may either, even land in their mouths or their noses. So what happens is masks provide a barrier to prevent that spray of respiratory droplets getting on to the people around us, and that's how they protect us. As far as contact tracing is concerned, it is a process of notifying people who've had a potential exposure to the COVID-19 virus. They're provided with information about the virus, and the individual is also given instructions on how and why to self-quarantine and how to monitor for symptoms of COVID-19. 
The contact tra- tracing staff will also discuss any relevant health history that the person might have that could put them at increased risk should they develop COVID-19. As far as the vaccines are concerned, Jim, studies show that the vaccine is helpful in keeping people from getting COVID-19. The vaccine will also prevent you from having a severe case of COVID-19, being hospitalized due to COVID, and from dying due to COVID-19. Early data shows that vaccines do help people with no symptoms from spreading COVID-19 virus. But scientists are still learning as more people get vaccinated. We're also learning just how long the vaccine protects people from getting COVID-19. Because of this, we still suggest that even people who have been fully vaccinated continue to take precautions when they are around people, especially people who are at risk for developing severe disease if they happen to get COVID-19 illness. This is actually a good time to remind people what being fully vaccinated means. Fully vaccinated, if you've gotten the two-dose version of the vaccine, Pfizer or Moderna, means that you're fully vaccinated two weeks or 14 or more days after your second dose. And for the Johnson & Johnson, which is a one-dose vaccine, you're fully vaccinated two weeks or 14 days or more after you get your dose of vaccine. Can we talk about widespread testing availability? I know last June, that was the big first milestone that we were able to achieve in terms of reopening up businesses and other places uh, like houses of worship um, and places where people can gather. And now as schools are beginning to reopen and more students will be in our buildings, um, capacity limits have also been lifted at many of these same places like businesses and religious organizations. We still need to keep testing. So uh, how, where, and when do people get tested if they are worried about a possible COVID-19 infection or exposure to it? And why is this so important? So it's very important to be able to get testing. Um, for example, if you've been exposed uh, or think you've been exposed to the COVID-19 virus, or if you've been contacted by a contact tracer who is um, letting you know that you they think you've been exposed, or if you've traveled, or if you have some symptoms that might think you have COVID-19. And there are multiple places in our county where you can get tested. Uh, many people can get tested at their own private doctor's office, um, which is very easy for them, and it's a place where they're comfortable going. You can get tested at many of our urgent care centers. And the Charles County Health Department still continues to offer free COVID-19 testing, and we're doing it every week. Uh, In order to find out what the times and the location is, you can check our website, which is www.charlescountycovid.org, or you can call our COVID-19 hotline at 301-609-6717 for details about times and locations. You can also go to the COVID testing site, which is covidtest.maryland.gov to find out available locations, other available locations in the county. CVS and other pharmacies are also offering testing uh, several days of the week. Dr. Abney, I know that you've also mentioned to commissioners in your briefings recently that you're very concerned about the new variants of the virus that are now in circulation throughout the United States. Can any of these variants be identified through testing, and how are we monitoring the spread of that? Uh, Yes, Jen, those new variants are identified through testing. That is one of the reasons why monitoring the spread of those variants and identifying where they are in our country and our county is indeed why we identify the variants. The way that is done is a sample of the positive uh, test throughout our county and, in fact, throughout the country, are sent for further testing. And that testing is called gene sequencing. And what happens is the labs actually look at the genes of those samples to see whether or not a variant is there. And then they collect that data, and then they will be able to see throughout our state and throughout the country how many of those variants exist and what they are. And as you probably know, there are three major variants now that are identified in our country, the UK variant, the South African variant, and the Brazil variant. Uh, There's also some that are showing up in California and in New York, but those are small at this time. 
we're kind of lucky here in Maryland because there are three places in Maryland, three laboratories in Maryland that actually can do those tests now. The Maryland Public Health Laboratory, the Johns Hopkins Laboratory, and the University of Maryland Baltimore Laboratory. So what have we learned uh, now that we've done extensive contact tracing about the spread of the virus and how it's transmitted and in what places it's being transmitted? I know that your team regularly monitors where outbreaks occur. And uh, I know that we've talked frequently about the fact that uh, small gatherings of people are actually one of the most common ways that this virus has spread. Does that still remain to be true? Or are we seeing changes now that the uh, economy is opening back up a bit more? Well, the economy, the economy is really just starting to open back up. So we don't have a lot of data on what has changed so far. But what I can tell you is that from contact tracing efforts, we've learned that large social gatherings such as house parties, dinner parties, uh, family parties continue to be the most commonly reported high-risk activities among cases. And I know I sound like a broken record, but it is important to continue to try to avoid large parties and large events even if they're with your family. And it's important to continue to wear your mask and to social distance. Important to continue to have good hand hygiene when you're around people outside of your household. If you must have gatherings, it's important to try to choose smaller gatherings with those in your household or with just a smaller group of people that you, that you know and that you've been around before. Choosing outdoor gatherings is safer. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to have a gathering where food is served, to have one person do the serving as opposed to having buffet style. Well, that's, those are some really good tips. And uh, it's important to keep these tips in mind as we continue to vaccinate people, but we're not quite at the widespread availability of vaccines just yet. So people need to continue to be extraordinarily cautious in their everyday activities. Can you give us an update or where we're at locally with our vaccinations and the latest statistics on that? Jen, I'd be happy to give you the information on vaccines for Charles County residents. This information is as of March 17th. So for the multi-dose regimen, um, there have been 26,165 first doses administered and 13,045 second doses that have been administered. And for the Johnson & Johnson, which you will recall is a single dose, there have been 855 doses. So for Charles County residents, counting everyone who's giving vaccine to Charles County residents, there have been a total of 40,065 doses given. As far as doses given by the health department, uh, the first doses administered of the two-dose vaccines is 14,301, and the second doses are 8,595 doses. So that's a total of 22,896. This actually does not include uh, the doses that we gave yesterday, which, which included our clinic, which was about 900 doses and some of our Johnson & Johnson clinics, because our clinics at, ended after the time that these were all calculated. Uh, so you can probably add a little over 1,000 to that number, to both of those numbers uh, that were given. That's really great d- news, Dr. Abney. Thank you so much for the hard work of your department and so many volunteers who uh, I know help assist you in getting this done each and every day and have been all throughout 2021. So in mid-April of 2020, a mask mandate was announced by Governor Hogan. Dr. Abney, how effective is wearing a mask in preventing the spread of the virus, and how long do you think we'll have to keep wearing them? So, Jen, masks are extremely effective. They prevent most of those respiratory droplets from escaping, as I told you, when you talk or cough. But they're only effective when you wear your mask correctly and when you wear the correct mask. So let's talk a little bit about what types of masks people should wear. You can wear a disposable mask, which people call either um, a medical procedure mask uh, or a disposable mask. And those are for one-time use. And you might think to wear them, especially if you're doing something where you think your mask might get wet and you might need to change it uh, because of that. Then you can also use cloth masks. And for those, you want a breathable 
tightly woven fabric like cotton, which is two to three layers. You can also wear a mask that has a pocket for filters. There's some masks that you shouldn't wear. You shouldn't wear scarves or ski masks or gaiters or anything that is just a single layer. And you shouldn't wear cloth masks that allow light to pass through because if it's so loosely woven that light can pass through, clearly respiratory droplets can pass through. You also don't want to wear masks that are not breathable. So you don't want to wear a leather mask or a plastic mask. Um, the exception to that, of course, is a face shield, which even though it is plastic, it sits far away from your mouth and nose so that you can breathe. You may see people wearing masks that have a vent on them. Those vents can actually allow respiratory droplets to escape through the vent. So you don't want to wear the mask with the vent. As far as how long we're going to need to wear masks, it's really hard to say how long we're going to continue to wear masks. It's going to depend on how long it takes for the spread of COVID-19 to really decrease in our community and for a large number of people to be fully vaccinated. It's our hope that they will become more commonplace in the future and that with time, the amount of COVID vaccine will increase and the amount of COVID disease in the community will decrease. But there's been an extra good side of wearing masks also. You may have noticed that there has been almost no flu in our community and in our country this year. And that is also because we've been wearing our masks and we've been keeping our distance. So it might indeed be a good idea in the future, even after we're past the COVID crisis, for in the wintertime or when we have a cold or a flu or anything like that, for us to go back to wearing our masks just to make sure that we're not spreading any infection to other people. But the bottom line is we need to remember to keep washing our hands, keeping our distance, and wearing our masks for the time being. Well, thank you, Dr. Abney. I love to end the podcast on a high note, and I think that that news about the lack of flu in the community is a great point. I also wanted to uh, talk briefly about Governor Hogan's announcement that vaccine supply is expected to increase at the end of the month. Where and how can people get signed up for a vaccination appointment as eligibility is expected to expand in the near future? Well, you may choose to register for an appointment at the state-operated vaccination site or at one of the other locations throughout the county, such as the University of Maryland Charles Regional Medical Center and one of the participating pharmacies. You can find more information about local vaccination sites and how to register for those sites at covidvax.maryland.gov or by calling the state hotline at 1-855-MD-GO-VAC. Keep in mind that our health department is only responsible for the registration of our own clinic. We cannot help you with re registration for other vaccination sites. Pre-registration pre with the health department does not mean that you are registered for a state-operated vaccination clinic. You will have to register through their registration process. You can register for vaccine with the Charles County Department of Health by going to our website at charlescountyhealth.org and completing the pre-registration form. You can also call our COVID-19 hotline at 301-609-6717. If you've already completed the health department pre-registered form, you can wait to be contacted by the health department for an appointment when a vaccine becomes available to you. So that's the news for today. I hope our conversation with Dr. Abney was helpful to you in keeping you informed about the latest information on the COVID-19 pandemic and our progress with everything related to it. We urge you to stay informed with facts from credible sources like the CDC and the Maryland Department of Health. You can always visit our website at charlescountymd.gov. We encourage you to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Subscribe to our county's e-newsletter. Sign up for our text and email alerts through the Citizen Notification System. And please watch CCG TV on Comcast Channel 95 or Verizon Channel 10. You can subscribe to our podcast, Charles County Unscripted, or watch us on YouTube every week during the pandemic where you will receive these current updates. We want to remind you, as always, wear your mask, wash your hands, 
and watch your distance to stay safe. We continue to make progress in slowing the spread of COVID-19, and we want to keep it that way. Thank you for listening. We look forward to seeing you next week.